Hey, my name is Marco. I'm a former pro opera singer turned voice actor, and today we're going to be listening to Kirby and the Forgotten Land, Two Planets Approach the Roche Limit. Kirby's one of these games that I've never really played. Uh, I think I played the most recent one for the Nintendo Switch that wasn't this one. So, just for the record, a Roche limit is actually the closest distance from the center of a planet that a satellite can approach without being pulled apart by the planet's gravitational field. So it's kind of interesting that this song is named that, and I'm curious to hear what it sounds like, because truly I have no idea what to expect. So let's take a listen and uh, stop and start as we go, okay? As far as introductions go, that's really, really accurate to a space kind of theme. I mean, you've got these bells and this twinkling, all of these things that, that are eliciting the sort of falling stars. It's pretty cool. And then, of course, you also have the solo voices there highlighting this sort of vastness of space in a way. <laughs> I'm sort of like at a loss here because first of all, this is so like adult for a Kirby game. Like because of the nature of the character of Kirby, I think that there are probably people that wouldn't take this music seriously, which is a shame because we're like pivoting into some like jazz. It's weird because we're using instrumentation that is based on a classical composition, but we're, we've got a snare drum coming in and a drum set and we're moving into jazz too. So, you know, there's a bit of tension in here and a bit of, of stress, but then it, there's also this like perky peppiness, which I suppose describes Kirby in and of itself. <laughs> That's so fun. It's so like, mm, it's got like a real zhuzh to it, you know? and the piano. It almost feels like this is like a freestyle jazz improvisation and we've got all these instruments, including the organ, who are sort of in on it. And they're all sort of taking turns uh, talking to each other. Hearing the bass like this reminds me of my dad so much. My dad loved like Chikoria and Steely Dan and 
This has that bass, that slap bass, 80s, 90s vibe to it, which I think is really, really fun to listen to. It reminds me a lot of some of the music that I listened to growing up, like Steely Dan, just some of these more funky things that my dad was really into. And so it's like kind of throwing me back. I didn't necessarily take Kirby seriously, but I'm listening to this and this is amazing. It's like so nice, you know what I mean? It's funky, it's jazzy, it's, it's got a, like a hair of classical technique in there too. Yeah, things are not as happy now. There's a dire situation here. There's a dire sound. Da, 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 da. There's a brooding element to this that is a bit more concerning, whereas the first half is probably Kirby's like general like sort of confidence. And then now we've got whoever he's fighting against or whatever he's fighting against now, I think actually has the capacity to maybe do some damage here. Things are not looking good, you know? Or maybe there's two planets that are a head-on collision or we're trying to rescue a satellite from falling into an atmosphere or something. I have no idea, but, it, but it's pretty interesting that this is, it's so mature. So now there's confidence again. I mean, the guy, listen to that trumpet just riffing. It's like facing adversity and coming out the other side and being like, look at what I just accomplished. You know what I mean? I'm back. When singers sing up that high, it's called whistle tone for a reason, because it sounds like whistle. Of course, you've heard Mariah Carey, Christina Aguilera do it. That's not exactly whistle tone, but you have to figure that that's like a high F above the staff. It's insanely high. And so even hearing that, like, ah, I mean, it's like so incredibly difficult as a singer to do that. I don't know if that was like an actual singer or if that was something else, but it's incredible how there are people that can sing this way. And the sheer difficulty of being a coloratura soprano and like discovering that you can sing that high. I mean, it's all just, it's nuts. I mean, it's like so difficult. <laughs> Also too, oh, it's just, it kind of goes gliding around.
Yeah, so these are like dire straits, you know, and it's kind of funny to hear that in a Kirby game because you're like, what dire straits? But like the beautiful thing about video game music is that it can make anything be a serious situation. And chances are in the world of Kirby and the Forgotten Land, this is serious, you know what I mean? And I think from an acting perspective, all situations that occur in theater are serious and life or death, right? No one just goes to get up a newspaper and, and it's just like, well, I'm just going to get a newspaper. It has to be like that newspaper is the most important newspaper you can find. The stakes need to be quite high. It needs to be life or death usually. In a lot of ways, video games too, like if we're not focusing on serious details that are very important to characters, then e us as gamers are going to become sort of bored. Like the stakes do need to be high in order for us to be like, oh my gosh, I need to do X, Y, Z in order to save the planet or save my friends or, or whatever. And, and you look at countless video games have this, you know, in good writing and in good music, the stakes need to be high. Otherwise uh, we won't play and we'll get bored or we'll fall out or we will not play at all. And, and you know, that's the cool thing about this is that this is a serious scenario, even though it's in a game with a, uh, a lovable pink, what is Kirby? One could say, oh, this isn't serious, but the actuality is that it is. Thank you so much. Uh, if you want to join the Discord, feel free to come hang out. And as always, thank you so much, and I'll, I'll talk to you later, okay? Bye.